What's going on guys? This is going to be a totally different video because I want to give you guys a dose of my other channel which is called BTB RV Rants. So what I'm going to do here is play for you guys the latest episode. Now I don't put any type of pictures or videos on the screen other than my typical rant video, but I think it will give you a good idea of how I address and answer questions that come across my channel via email, Facebook, or other social media. And I will put a link in the description of this video to get directly to my other channel. And if you haven't had a chance, please subscribe to it. I really appreciate it. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of BTB RV Rants. Let's dive straight into the questions. So the first question comes from a viewer who says that they have a 2018 Chevy Silverado 2500 HD LTZ gas crew cab truck. The door sticker indicates a payload capacity of 2,550 pounds. It has a maximum fifth wheel trailering capacity of 14,000 pounds. And they want to know what is the biggest gross vehicle weight trailer that they can tow behind it in terms of fifth wheel. Wheels. Now, what you need to be most cautious of is your payload capacity in this scenario, because at 14,000 pounds, you're talking about roughly a 3,000 pound pin weight that would be transferred to the back of your truck. So you definitely can't tow a fifth wheel that's 14,000 pounds. What I would suggest is to try to find a trailer with a 10,000 pound gross vehicle weight rating or less. In most cases, that's only going to transfer at most 2,000 to 2,100 pounds worth of pin weight to the back of your truck, and it's going to leave you roughly 450 to 550 pounds of payload capacity remaining for passengers and cargo within the vehicle. So again, 10,000 pounds gross vehicle weight rating on a fifth wheel, and I think you'll be in pretty good shape. If you can go slightly lighter than that, I think you'd be even in better shape. And I still would recommend adding something like a maybe a larger sway bar, perhaps airbags, things that can help level out the front headlights and put the truck more in a level stance whenever you've loaded the fifth wheel in the back of the truck. Now the next question is actually a follow-up comment to a question that I addressed in my last video, and that is about RV roofs being kind of junk or trash. Well, he clarified and sent me another email basically stating that he's not really talking about the roofing material, he's talking about the caulking material and the fact that it's recommended that you get on top of your roof with some Dicor sealant and seal up areas that might be cracking or possibly failing every year to maintain your 12 year warranty. And that is something you absolutely do need to keep an eye on because dependent on the climate you're in, dependent on where you're going, the weather, the sun, all of that, it's going to really wear out the caulk and the sealant around your roof. And it's something you really do need to inspect as often as possible. And a lot of people don't. So you might only have a fifth wheel that's a couple years old and you're wondering why you're getting water damage inside. And that's generally because it hasn't been maintained the way that the manufacturer claims. The main reason that you generally run into caulking issues with the seal around the roof is because the way RVs move, it's a high likelihood that some of that's going to be flexing. And once it dries up in the sun and it's exposed to heat, humidity, and different types of climates, whether it's freezing, whether it's hot, and especially the transition from different climates when you travel with an RV, it can put a lot of stress on that sealant. So a lot of times the cracks actually form simply because you're driving down the road and it's moving. And one of the areas that they want you to address from the roofing perspective is to make sure that you seal up those areas when they form. Now there are some options for folks who are looking to replace their roof or even order a new fifth wheel and want a higher end roof. If you go with some high end brands, you do have a full fiberglass option, which is going to be more like a class A diesel pusher might have. But brands like DRV do offer the ability to have a fiberglass roof as opposed to your standard rubber roof. When you look at after market options, there are companies out there that can actually coat the top of your RV either as a repair or an aftermarket upgrade. Companies like RV Armor claim to have a lifetime warranty with no really hidden clauses. They essentially put a coating over whatever type of roof you have. They fix all the issues and you should never have to get on your roof again. Now long term, I don't know how that's backed up simply because I don't know how long the company's been around. But to make that type of claim and to claim that they come to you to install it is as well as do the repair is a pretty bold claim and I'd really like to learn more about that because that could be a good option for a lot of folks. 
So the next question comes from a viewer who is looking at getting into RVing. They are looking at buying their first RV and tow vehicle, and they plan on getting a travel trailer in the 9,000 pound range that is roughly 32 feet long. Based on everything that I've talked about on my channel, they look like they're going to get a 2500 HD truck, likely a GM or a Ram, simply because 2500 HD is what they call theirs. The question they have is, should they get a long bed version, or should they get the 6 foot 4 inch box version? to better and more safely effectively tow a travel trailer. So that's a really good question. And what a lot of people don't realize is the bed length and the overall wheelbase length of a pickup truck can impact the towing performance, especially when it comes to sway. I would generally recommend if you're okay with getting a long bed version, do that. Having the eight foot bed, spreading the axles out a little bit further will actually be a natural sway deterrent. It will help you fight sway simply because it it spreads out essentially the amount of traction on the ground and it makes it less likely for the trailer to control what's taking place with the truck itself. So I would highly recommend that you get an eight foot bed if you can, if you feel comfortable with it. A six foot four inch bed will be okay. But again, eight foot bed would be ideal for what you're trying to do. If again, you're okay with a truck that's that long. So the next question is also a very good question, and it is from a viewer who is asking if Texas still does annual inspections on vehicles, and can you delete a diesel and pass inspection? So that is a very good question, and it is not a clear-cut question. So quite a few counties in the state of Texas have gone to a vehicle emissions inspection for your annual inspection. So you will have to pass emissions inspection in order to renew your registration. And a lot of people don't realize that deleting a diesel vehicle will cause it to fail inspections. So I get asked that question all the time. Do I plan on deleting my truck? If you delete a vehicle and you try to get it inspected in one of the counties that requires emissions inspections, you're going to fail that inspection. You won't be able to renew your vehicle registration. The other problem that can happen is if you get pulled over and they do a what's called a remote sensing inspection on your vehicle which generally requires them to have the equipment to do so if they determine that you do not pass an inspection in those areas where you're required to have emissions equipment on your vehicle you can be fined thousands of dollars plus be required to put all that equipment back on your vehicle so the cost of deleting a vehicle can be several thousands of dollars and then the cost of having to repurchase that equipment if you get rid of it to have it reinstalled back on the vehicle plus the fines that you can be charged will make it definitely not worth it for me or most people. Now if you want to learn more about that in the state of Texas you can go to tceq.texas.gov and look up air quality and it will give you the specifics as well as the penalties and the areas that you have to be concerned about this. In my opinion it's just not worth it anymore given the fact that most counties seem to be going in that direction and they're really trying to enforce emissions. And I know a lot of people think that that's government oversight. It is just another way for government to kind of intervene in our lives and control it. But in my opinion, air quality is an important thing. It's important for everybody, especially children. And being a parent and being someone who is concerned about what my child breathes in, I do think that there should be requirements in place that prevent people from overly polluting the air. And regardless of who you are, I think most people can get behind the fact that air quality is something that we should all keep an eye on. So the last question for today is regarding upgrading tires from a LT26560 R20 to a 29565R20 on a 2017 GMC 2500 Denali Duramax. Is that going to affect towing capabilities? And the simple answer is probably. Simply because when you go to a wider tread pattern, which a 295 versus a 265 is going to be a significantly wider tread pattern, and you go to a slightly taller profile tire, or your aspect ratio being 65% of that 295 versus 60% of that 265, you might be causing the tire to be a little wide for your factory wheel. And if that's the case, you actually are going to reduce the overall load capacity on your tire. 
Also, depending on the type of tire you get and the tread pattern on it, if you have tall tread blocks, if it's more of like a mud style tire, then those tread blocks themselves are also going to flex. And when those flex, if you're towing something like a travel trailer or a large fifth wheel, it will give you the kind of the feeling of sway simply because those tread blocks will flex side to side and it will feel like sway even though technically it's not. However, it can still be a little nerve wracking if you get into a scenario where that extra tall tire and tread block causes that trailer to kind of rock back and forth and it can enhance sway effects, especially if you're hauling a travel trailer. So you do wanna be careful with your tire size. So that'll do it for this episode of BTB RV Rants. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment and subscribe to this channel as well as my main channel, Big Truck, Big RV.